My name's Dr. Joe McCardell. I'm consultant podiatrist in Salford Royal Foundation Trust in Salford, Manchester. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about my experience in clinical practice using Natrox. Um, I was fortunate that I was a research lead in the clinical study that was done in the UK using a double-blinded randomised controlled trial. Our centre recruited 14 patients. Eight of the, these were registry, which meant that they went straight onto the device, and six were part of the randomised, the randomised arm. This meant then that they were on a placebo or they were on the actual Natrox device itself, but it was blended to myself and it was blended to the patients. At the end of the study, though, the patient could be unblinded, and if at that point they weren't on the study product, then they could be put straight onto the Natrox device if the patient wished to do so. There was positive outcomes. So I want to just talk through one of the case studies that I had. Mr S was a 46-year-old male, diabetes type 1. He had in the past been a poorly controlled diabetes patient, but in the more recent years, since having a family, had improved and his HbA1c at this point was 8.87%, which is still higher than um, optimum, but it's significantly improved since his last HbA1c in the previous years. He was a working man with a young family, and he had normal weight and no other health problems at the time. The wound had been present for 10 weeks with no significant improvement observed, and he was a good candidate to go onto this study product. Uh, he also had neuropathy, but had good blood supply to his foot. So as you can see from the wound, it was quite deep. It wasn't probing to bone. There was no signs of bone infection, but there was a static. It, it, there was no improvement happening within the wound. So if you just look through the progress in the wound through the different time scales, through the period through, of the study, and even actually before we completed the end of the study, he actually went on to heal. And the other thing about this is that he remained healed and to this day he's had no other problems since in that area and he's actually had no other ulceration in the foot, which is quite um, unusual for diabetes patients. So from this final picture you can see there's a nice epithelialized area and there was no further requirement for the Natrox device. This was observed in other patients in the study but I've just picked out this one for you to observe today. So what's also important to me as a clinician, it's not just about that healing, it's about is it acceptable to the patients and how do the clinicians use it as well? How do they feel about using the product? So from a patient's perspective, because at the end of the day, it's those that use the product, not us, um, they found it easy to use, they found the batteries easy to operate, and they felt secure that it wouldn't damage or um, it wouldn't damage the skin or it wouldn't cause further problems if it stopped working. Some devices, if they stop working, unless you change them immediately, it can cause um, secondary problems. There was no noise or beeping associated with it, so it was quite quiet. So they felt that they could be discreet wearing the device, which again, for a patient, it's really important that they don't feel that they stick out in any way um, and they can just go about their daily business. And in this case, with this young man, he was able to go to work as normal. Um, from a clinician's perspective, I took a slightly different approach with this and because it was a part of a study, I felt it was really important to make sure that the people... Um, other health professionals such as the district nursing teams, the community nurses, other clinicians in the community were able to use the device appropriately because on first approach to the device, if you didn't have any experience with it, it might look quite complicated. So my strategy was to visit and, and train them and educate them in using it and it was really well accepted after that point. Um, I didn't send any patient out with just with a note of communication. I actually went with the patient and did a visit. And after that, there was no need for any secondary visits because the clinicians were able to use it effectively because it is so simple to use. My own experience, because I was using the device regularly, I found it was also really easy to apply. There was no excoriation or secondary periskin complications. And also what I liked about it as a clinician was that I was able to choose which secondary dressing I wanted because... Every wound can be different, there can be different levels of exudate and they, they require different levels of um, moisture absorbent dressings. So we were able to choose that. It wasn't prescriptive about what you could use. So for me, would I use it in clinical practice? Definitely. And I'm really excited about the opportunity to use it more and to share my experiences with clinicians um, and to show them actually what a good product it is.